Recently, Rhode Island State Representative Robert Nardilio announced plans to change how video game tax is handled via a press release on the Rhode Island General Assembly official website. In it, he explains that he plans to tax violent video games an extra 10%, violence being defined as any video games rated mature or higher by the ESRB. He then goes on to say that he will use the money generated through the tax to fund counselling, mental health programs and other conflict resolution activities in schools. To quote, State House Representative Robert Nardilio will introduce legislation to increase mental health and counseling resources in schools by implementing a tax on video games rated M or higher. There is evidence that children exposed to violent video games at a young age tend to act more aggressively than those who are not, stated Rep Nardilio. The bill would give schools the additional resources needed to help students deal with that aggression in a positive way. Because states cannot ban the sale of certain video games to minors, Rep Nardilio's proposal will instead allocate money to counteract the aggression they may cause. The legislation would levy an additional 10% tax to video games sold in Rhode Island with a rating of M or higher. Revenue generated by this tax will then be placed in a special account for school districts to use to fund counselling, mental health programs and other conflict resolution activities. Our goal is to make every school in Rhode Island a safe and calm place for students to learn. By offering children resources to manage their aggression today, we can ensure a more peaceful tomorrow, said Rep Nardilio. There are several issues with this statement, one of the most glaring being that no sources have been cited for the claim that video games increase aggression. Furthermore, there is a big difference between aggression and violence. Aggression is a very broad category of behaviour and includes things like sports aggression, competition and debating. The American Psychological Association Society for Media Psychology and Technology made a public statement last June about this, asking people to stop incorrectly using these terms and saying there is links when this hasn't been proven. There will be a link to the report in the description, but to summarise, the Society for Media psychology and technology states 1. Little evidence exists linking violence and violent video games. 2. The effects on aggression is an entirely different subject. And 3. The effects on aggression remains a matter of reasonable debate. To quote an informative section from the report, a wide body of research has examined the impact of violent video games on relatively minor acts of aggression, such as the administration of unwanted hot sauce to make food too spicy, making someone put his or her hand in freezing ice water, or bursts of white noise in laboratory experiments. These studies have resulted in mixed outcomes, some reporting evidence for significant effects and others do not. Further, the validity of these measures of aggression remains debated. Whether such studies provide conclusive evidence for a relationship between violent video games and these minor forms of aggression remains a matter of reasonable debate. We note that even among the members of APA Division 46, Society for Media Psychology and Technology, opinions regarding the impact of media violence and aggression differ considerably. It would be entirely reasonable for a scholar to argue that some links between violent media and aggression may exist, just as it is also reasonable for a scholar to argue that links between violent media and aggression do not exist. This document therefore focuses upon the less publicised, more scientifically sound view that little evidence exists that playing violent video games produces violent criminal behaviour. Behavior. Scant evidence has emerged that makes any casual or correlational connections between playing violent video games and actually committing violent activities. By contrast, research evidence available to date indicates that violent video games have minimal impact on violent activity in society. Correlational and longitudinal studies of youth suggest that violent video game exposure does not meaningfully predict youth physical aggression or violent crime. Some research has suggested that youth with more aggressive personalities may seek out violent games. However, violent games does not increase a assaultive behaviour among such youth. Further, little clear evidence has emerged that youth identified as at risk due to alleviated mental health symptoms are influenced to become more aggressive due to exposure to violent video games. Further, evidence from societal data examining video game violence use has yet to document that such use is predictive of violent crime. Similar absence of predictive relationships has been observed for violent movies. These findings seem to go completely against what Nardalio has said in his press release. Furthermore, a tax on M-rated video games wouldn't just affect violent games. Games can be rated mature for all sorts of reasons, and under these plans, non-violent video games would be affected too. The website PC Gamer has discovered that Nardalio is a strong gun advocate, reporting, Nardalio was rated A in a 2016 endorsement by the National Rifle Association's Political Victory Fund. Solidly pro-gun candidate, a candidate who has supported NRA positions on key votes in elective office or a candidate with a demonstrated record of support on Second Amendment issues. 
In the wake of a 2015 mass murder in San Bernardino that left 14 dead and 22 seriously wounded, he spoke out against gun control, telling WPRI.com that new laws would only hurt the average individual who wants to protect themselves and their family. This news also comes just as President Trump also commented on the effects of violent video games on young people in a meeting at the White House, as well as the Kentucky governor recently strongly condemning violent games for their supposed link to real world violence. Nondaleo is also running for the US Senate in the 2018 election. As always, Sense Gaming will continue watching all of these matters closely and will be sure to report on any new developments as soon as they are known. Please make sure to subscribe if this is something that you're interested in staying up to date with and until next time, thank you for watching.